This is lecture 18 of CS 147 computer architecture study. Uh, this is part 2 of parallel processing system. Uh, in this lecture, we'll review three different uh, parallel processing systems, uh, namely cluster computing, new organization, and vector processing. So cluster computers. Uh, this is a group of interconnected individual computers working together as an unified computing resource that can create an illusion of being one machine. Okay. Uh, so this means like when you are sitting in the uh, sitting with your your own laptop basically they are all like we are given with the laptops or personal desktop at the industries and you connect to this system and then this system will kind of give you an illusion that you are connected with one computing environment with multiple processor available to you okay so in this architecture it really doesn't matter what kind of computers are there at the back ends we can connect like thousands of personal computing like pc system uh, together and make a powerful cluster computing environment uh, so you you throw more of these cheaper machines there your compute power gets increased instead of using few uh, really you know expensive uh, workstations or servers and that kind of thing so uh, what happened in this system at the back end side there is a high speed network switch connections that connect all these computing uh, computers we call it a computing node and they are basically an individual computers okay now depending on company's need and their uh, target and their policies some company can go with the really cheap like for example Dell machines or some some HP machines or they can go with some really high-end high, -end, high uh, uh, processing power environment with, with blade servers and uh, uh, Intel Xeon processors, uh, that kind of thing, it can happen. But point is that it is not needed to a company to go with expensive machines. Okay. Now, from user perspective, when you are connected with this kind of system, the whole systems give you an illusion that you as if you logged into one remote machine there is one big remote machines and it it gives you like multiple of processor inside it as if multiple cores are available to you and you just program it okay so it gives the illusion of one single powerful computer with with many many cores available to you uh, then you can actually do programming like you can of course run your sequential traditional programs or if you want to take advantage of this kind of system you make software with the parallel programming uh, concepts and stuff like that uh, to run some faster application on the performance side okay so hardware point of view it has this several computers connected through high speed network switch then between hardware and software this system provides something called a cluster middleware okay so these middlewares sole uh, purpose is to give that single system image and availability infrastructure okay what does it mean let's say your backend Ranch has 1000 machine connected to it and for your day-to-day -day programming purpose you need let's say 100 of them okay so you request this system through this cluster middleware that allocate me a system with like 100 core so it will give you a virtual machine system image which which have like every characteristics of any machine you log in like individual machine you log in like ssh you can do you can run things 
like just as a normal machine but it's kind of we call it a virtual machine and virtual machine is given to you and if you actually look at its through the operating system of course if you look at this configuration you will see okay it has 100 cores and its maximum memory is these uh, i'll come to the memory topic later a little bit later in detail we need an understanding there uh, but point is this like as if you can you can request this cluster middleware to give you and create a computing environment for you with a 100 core computing machine though your backbone of this infrastructure may not have a 100 core machine single machine it perhaps is running like 8 core or 16 core or 32 core machines at the backbone but it the whole system is creating an illusion to you of having a one system with 100 cores okay now you develop your parallel program parallel applications on top of that so what happens operating system like at the front end which is like uh, which is between your application and cluster middleware i haven't shown that in this diagram but this operating system also thinks you have 100 cores and it schedules all the scheduling goes accordingly uh, as if it has a local one local machine has 100 cores and then this scheduling request goes to the cluster middleware and this cluster middleware where is now like controls like which thread or which uh, program goes to what physical machine okay so it has one advantage you can say that let's say you requested a computing environment with 100 core it give you it and in reality it is running probably across five or six different machines your your parallel program is run at the background like in the back backend infrastructure now let's say one of the machine goes down right as an user you won't see a difference you, your machine will your virtual machine will still keep on running with 100 core what happens middleware takes care of that and reroute your your uh, request for any thread running or stuff like that at that at those we call it a virtual core to another machine which is up and running okay of course then it sends the it managing department personals to say that okay there is a fault a machine is down go and do something so in the back like these data centers or compute farm this it department goes kind of transparent to the user and start replacing those machines and bad machines and compute farm is up again with its full capacity but user point of view it doesn't see a difference except probably for some slowness of the uh, performance if assuming that all the machines are already uh, like occupied with all the employees of the of the whole company right it might happen a company has like many 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 employees and many many employees can request for like multiple different type of machines virtual machines from this cluster middleware and assuming that all the backend machines are filled with with job and one system is down then of course some heat will happen at the performance end uh, performance end uh, uh, at the front end side but it's kind of it's not a kind of an your system is down kind of scenario system doesn't go down kind of ever in this architecture all right so there are couple of characteristics and advantages some of them i already mentioned in this cluster architecture first of all it has a single point entry means like you are there is software through which you request for your machine 
okay the hey i need this kind of machines 100 cores or 50 core or 64 core machines with this much memory in it uh, so give me that Then second point is it's a single job management. As I mentioned, this cluster middleware is really the one who manages job across this smaller machine connected at the back end. Okay, though from your perspective, from engineer's perspective, it's they're enjoying a big virtual machine. Cluster middleware takes care of this job management through like through one single point like it's not a single process job management but what i mean is that your job management is centralized and its responsibility goes to cluster middleware and it's a single process space means virtually it's it's, it's creating a virtual machine to you right so all your process is basically looking at that machine multi-core machine where you can communicate with each other so you do not need to take care of that communication by yourself to remote log into some machines one machine to another and stuff like that it's basically presenting you with a single machine environment and you are enjoying one single process space where you basically start creating uh, process in sub process inside them inside that virtual system and single file hierarchy so this also gives you this uh, this uh, virtual uh, feeling of that you are enjoying one single file hierarchy with starting with a root and then depending on how your art it architect your your a hierarchy structure like user usr bean usr this and that but they are all kind of a virtual part of a virtual file systems which again distributed across this all these pieces okay so you are enjoying like big big amount of space which may not necessarily be a part of one disk system or one machine system it can be distributed all over but you don't know you basically to you it's a one file hierarchy single user interface so as i said like this is one software where you request for machine it gives back the machines and that's it then you are in the machine and do your day-to-day -day task It has the checkpointing, single control point, single I/O space. I/O space, single I/O space is basically similar to your single file hierarchy. That same concept. Instead of file, just think of your all the I/Os. Like uh, disk is a file hierarchy, but your uh, network, your printers, and things like that, all of them can be connected to this whole system as a holistic. Okay. Uh, in fact, like there, there is system, right? You you do not print to a targeted printer. You basically uh, upload the job to the cluster, and then you walk into your nearest printer machines. You log in there either through your your office badge or through some login interface, and your job is basically done in that specific machine so you are not choosing a printer up front you just tell this cluster system hey go and print and then you walk into that machine where from you want to get that hard copy of your printing you log in there you know voila you got your printer printing job done there uh, single memory space uh, this is a little bit tricky though like this like though it says it's a single memory space conventionally the cluster architecture is is basically distribute your process and and it's kind of uh, support the parallelism in the program okay parallelism in the execution now each process each parallel thread or parallel process 
can enjoy maximum amount of memory which is available on that machine where it is physically executed. Okay, so you though you are specifying to the system that hey, I probably need maximum of like four gigabyte of spare memory or stuff like that, or or sixteen gigabyte of memory. What you are actually specifying is that per node, this is my maximum memory I need. Per say you are asking for 100 nodes or 100 cores and then the memory is basically is attached to each of these core okay so let's say you ask for 100 core and per core you are asking for maximum 16 gb and your there as long as there are systems to fulfill such criteria it will give you the system Let's say if you are asking for 100 core and you are asking for 1 terabyte of memory, maybe like any of the machines in the network doesn't have one single machine has that 1 terabyte of memory. It will tell you, hey, I cannot give you that machine. It is beyond my scope. Why? Because in the cluster system, your single thread or of this multiple thread process or single pro sub process of a main process is bound with the memory of the node where it is being executed. All right, though it is give you a single memory space, but this little concept is there. You need to understand this, and we'll see this specific problem is addressed in the new architecture. All right, we will talk about this. Now about this single virtual networking. So again, as a, as a, as an application programmer, you don't need to <coughs> go with all this like network hierarchy, how it communicate with each other. There are libraries available which through the cluster middleware, of course, like uh, you tell that this is the machines I want to communicate through these interfaces, and voila, it is done for you. Uh, Checkpointing, process migration, this is more like an IT management kind of job. As I said, like IT can check like health of the machines and, and these systems like with an interval, fixed interval of time kind of log things up front that what is going on in the whole system. Some memory is down, some network switch is down, some machine is down, this processor is burnt up and so on and so forth. And then, based on that, this checkpointing, uh, not only that, by the way, checkpointing also not only does log, but also time to time basically store the current state of the user program and processes. Okay, so which is very important for this next point of process migration. So let's say it basically go and you know like store the details of the process their uh, memory state their register file state and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then one machine is down okay then what happens this process migration takes place from that checkpoint okay so as if your program was running at a checkpoint let's say c1 and towards going to to be on the checkpoint two, let's say the machine crashed. Okay, the machine is burnt up; it's not functioning correctly. Then, this cluster management system, what it can do, detect this fault, and restore your program and process from the checkpoint C one into a different machine. Okay, so as if so, as a user, you don't feel that you will still see uh, maybe a little bit glitch sometimes for a little bit of time your program is kind of halt and then start again but during that time what is happening your process being migrated from one machine to another from the faulty machine to uh, uh, correct uh, right machine or okay machine and then your program start running as it is. So of course there is a responsibility for the programmers as well to be programming on this type of uh, architecture and, and uh, this type of platform 
is that your program has to be recoverable. Okay, so it's not that you are you are basically running something and committing something either to the disk or to the memory which you cannot restart from one previous point. So restarting capability like stop and restart capability is one of the uh, one of the criteria of the parallel uh, of the programming environment as in the uh, with these these systems. So we need to deal with uh, in industry like in different kind of signals uh, operating system produced for the process and we need to handle it correctly inside the program so that we can restart the process successfully into the other uh, physical good hardware system. Let's, uh, let's look at this how this cluster is implemented based on the blade server. Okay, so here uh, let's say each of this row is uh, of this block is called a blade server machine. Okay, this is this is one machine and this is blade server rack which consists of let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, eight machine. This is called entire thing is called one rack and all these eight machines are connected through switch network switch. Then we can construct several such blade server rack, right? So this this whole system has uh, four into eight, thirty-two server servers together, and they are all connect with each other through switch network. Okay, so this is this is what is done in the in your in your in the data center or your IT compute ranch if you ever has has a chance to visit a compute ranch of any any company any industry company you will see this kind of. Uh, scenario what you see basically like maybe just again with the blade server example let's say this is your one blade server one machine sticking out uh, from the rack uh, one machines uh, actually this is not a rack actually this is one machines in a chassis okay what you call a chassis these eight machines are inside a chassis and then these each individual is placed in a kind of an cupboard like uh, structure stack one up to another and then we can we can replicate that into the cluster computers in the data center they are all connected through the switches so so one blade server goes into chassis these chassis are stacked up and this stacked up chassis is kind of replicated like in a very big wide field basically and they are all connected through your uh, switches network switches so this is how your cluster computers looks like in a data center. So what is the benefit? It is absolute scalable. You add up more switch, you add up more server, there you go. You can go from 100 to 500, 500 to 1000, 1000 to 3000 and it is an incremental scalability. You can start if you are let us say you are starting a company, it is a startup, you are small scope, you start small like 100 machine then as your business grow up your demand grows up and you start putting in more machines like 200 400 800 and it's absolute incremental i need high available because as i explained if some real hardware is down your process is not affected that much it's just get migrated into another another good computing node and of course, it's a superior in price and performance because you can now actually uh, include cheaper machines in your cluster network environment. You no longer need to go with the high-end server. And that's the one point actually affected this uh, business of some microsystem, which, are, which was all about, about high-end server. Very, very powerful, very powerful server, but very pricey. And what happened when these things comes up, industry, especially during the uh, economic downturn, downturn, uh, it basically started buying the cheap machines, like this PC kind of machines, Dell, Dell servers, Dell machines, with the Intel processor, not so powerful, but they made up a beautiful, effective infrastructure with the cheaper machines but it's 
scalable, high available, and and you are have all the computing power what you need. So that's what is meant by superior price and performance.